Should I take this off? That's right. No, no. you got to keep going. Keep it on for the whole episode. You think I should have it? For yeah. the, okay. Well, hold on. Let's let's. I want to see. Hold I want to feel. I want you to feel pain. Can you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> What is going on, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And I'm David. Why do you seem slightly uneasy? Yeah. <laughs> that was like a delay. Uh, okay, so for, for audio listeners, I am currently wearing the Apple Vision Pro. Um, I'm probably not the only one doing a podcast wearing the Vision Pro, but there is something weird to it. Uh, you can see my eyes, right? Yeah. You can see, I, I would say. You can see at least one of my eyes. You can tell I'm looking through at you guys. Yeah. Um, this is this was basically Apple Vision Pro week on the channel, on, on the main channel anyway, having all of our coverage, the unboxing, covering what was new, reviewing the thing. And I feel like the podcast is a great format for just like Q and A. Lots of people ask questions on social media, but you guys can probably also ask lots of questions. And I promise you, I have all the answers, every single answer, every single one, everyone. Uh, to update, I currently have a stopwatch going because Marquez is going to try and hold these. I think everyone's question always is, how heavy is it? Is it that heavy? You're trying the set, the dual band, the dual loop band, dual. The dual loop band. I have a stopwatch going. It's going to add like five minutes, but we're going to periodically throughout here check in every 15, 20 minutes, see how you're holding yeah, it up. going. Yeah. So I will start by saying most of the footage that we've done with the Vision Pro so far was with this solo knit band. This is a really cool looking band. Yeah. This is the band that's in most of the ads. This is the band that's in like most people's footage. And it's this cool like mesh that expands and has a dial in it that you twist mm -hmm. to tighten it. It's super cool. Yeah. But it's not as comfortable as a dual loop band because it's only the back of your head and basically it pulls all of the weight onto the front of your face and I get this cheek fatigue and above the eye fatigue uh, pretty quickly. And I've, I have not been able to wear it with this band for more than an hour without being oh, really? kind of exhausted and having to take it off. So this dual loop band, which I'm wearing now, also adds a strap like right over your head where my headphones are. And so now it's kind of lifting it off of the cheekbone a little bit and it's much more comfortable and I bet I could wear this for much longer. We'll, so we'll see. For long periods of time, I highly, highly, highly recommend, and this comes with it, but I would highly recommend the dual loop band for sure. When you say sh for sh long periods of time, like at a certain point, should you just put that one on? And not like, would you put this yeah, back on to just be like, this oh, I'm barely sure. using it and I look cooler using it? The this. benefit of this one is it messes up your hair slightly less Fair. and it's faster to put on and adjust. This one's got like Velcros you got to adjust and slide right. and then put back on and you have True. to find the Velcro and so maybe if you're get there. only using it for like a five, 10 minute session, you just That's put easy. this on. Yeah. Okay. Which really bodes well for like at the Apple Store setup. You yes. want to go test it. This does look miles better yeah. and also it's, it's really so cool. cool when you like see when you turn the dial and you see it like slowly grasp yeah. onto the person's head yeah with these like nice orange bands that can expand and contract yeah, in there cool engineering for a headband yeah, for okay. sure can i say something before we get into this because i know we have a lot of stuff to get into uh -huh. i love how interesting this headset is because it's flawed yeah i think that we've for the last year especially if you look at youtube comments about new tech that's come out new smartphones especially oh my God, this is so boring. This is just a spec bump. There's no risk. This isn't even interesting. Why is this even a video? All oh, the the flat line has occurred, like the plateau. We've reached peak smartphone. All of that comment, we've seen all of that a thousand times. Yeah. Especially from Apple and phones. No new iPads for a year. <laughs> like tablet, like all this stuff is so stagnant. This is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> this has lots of really high heights. It has lots of places where it falls short. It has trade-offs, pros and cons, flaws that come with how cool it is, it is so much more interesting than the boring, you know, stuff we expect every year. And so I that's think why I like it. Part of that reason is because Apple is great at designing things. They're great at making sure things are really good. Mm -hmm. So when we say things are unApple like, it's because it doesn't work. It's also basically they, flawlessly and this has a lot of unApple like things. Yeah, and there's they also exist in a lot of very mature categories. Yeah. So like we know what a laptop is. So when we get a new laptop year after year after year, it's like, yeah, we're refining at this point. This is a first gen product and yeah. it has all of the telltale signs of a first gen product. The battery life sucks, it's heavy, it's expensive, there's yeah. not that many apps. But 
the promise of the future is also super interesting. I do have to say, like, I uh, I had dinner with Viren from The Verge last night, who's, like, their video director there. Mm -hmm. And we were talking a lot about Vision Pro because we both used it pretty extensively. And we were both saying, like, yeah, like, phones have gotten to the point where they're just so freaking boring to make videos about and stuff. But 10 years ago, I could not have imagined that something like this would exist in real life. Like, when you use it for the first time, it's pretty amazing. And then later you're just like, this is a sci-fi technology. Yeah. It really, it like, you can look at the screen recordings of what it looks like to be wearing the Vision Pro and just see things floating around you and just like s casting shadows and sitting. And like, yeah. you could g watch a Star Trek episode and someone would probably put on a headset and start manipulating stuff in space. <laughs> That's literally what that is. Yeah. And because the technology has kind of progressed uh, progressively over the last 10 years, it doesn't it's not as shocking because it didn't just come out of nowhere mm -hmm. um a lot of the elements of the vision pro are still so far ahead of other headsets that it does still feel really advanced but 10 years ago anything like this would be magic yeah i think that's part of the reason why it feels so flawed in some aspects is because it is so far ahead in a lot of things that came out but then yeah. the way apple marketed it some of those things they marketed are far behind it's also just flawed because no one knows what to do with well that. yeah that is well, <laughs> like it's pointless yeah. right now can i ask a quick question yeah you're at a different angle than me you can see both of, I can his, see eyes. Both of his eyes i cannot interesting i can see oh now, now i can only see one now eye. i can can you go back to how you were <laughs> looking at both of us i want to take a picture i can we'll put it I'll, in the video okay, i'll version. take a picture too yeah i can see david marquez's <laughs> eye and then the waveform logo that's yeah. okay so i can see both of his eyes yeah for audio <laughs> listeners there is a, a phone very there's a very distinct yeah. feature of this headset that no other VR headset has. And that's a screen facing the outside. Oh yeah. Okay, so it's facing it's not for me at all. It's literally for the people around me and the like sort of highlighted feature you've seen in the ads is called yeah. eyesight and it's supposed to put your eyes on the outside of the headset, it's got this lenticular film over it, so it's a three, it's got this depth effect, it's supposed to sink it into the headset, it gives you this feeling of being able to connect with the outside world, maybe even make eye contact, uh, and you can tell when I am in pass-through mode because you can see my eyes, and then when I go to the moon real quick, you have this uh, blue-purple film that goes over the front of it that makes you know that, okay, now I'm in the headset. At least logically, that's what's supposed yes. to be happening. I don't know that it works as well as people were hoping. It's not nearly as bright no. as the videos. And low resolution. And also this dome, this glass dome on my face is so reflective yeah. that literally every light source is just like beams yeah. of lights all over my they face. They need to use the new Galaxy S24 glass. <laughs> so yeah, they, they need it to be anti-glare in some way. And I kind of, yeah. we were talking about like, why didn't they make it matte glass or something like that? Mm -hmm. And I think think that that would mess with the outward facing sensors. I don't think you I can do that. I think we came to the conclusion that it would either potentially mess with the sensors or the sensors would have to be a different class, and therefore being bad. way more obvious mm -hmm. and look bad. Yeah. yeah, I think ironically, something I'm excited for in version two is just the resolution and brightness of eyesight being better yeah, on the I outside. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. was the most excited. Marquez had it on, I was like, do you have eyesight set up? And he's like, yeah. I was like, oh. I wanted to see it being creepy. And then he's like, you can't see it. And I was like, no. And then he like yeah. looked me straight in the eyes. I was like, there it is. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Well, for our thumbnail of our second Vision Pro video that we put out on the main channel, we literally have a comparison of <laughs> yeah. the ad versus what it actually looks like. Mm -hmm. The ad makes it look so much higher resolution and so much brighter. And they definitely were just tracking that. Yeah. I think and add it in a perfectly reflectionless room. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. but also, so like I took a picture of it and threw it on Twitter and a lot of people are like, well, if you're on a plane and the, the flight attendant comes by, it's darker, right? And like we turn the lights on. Sometimes. Off. Yes, yeah, sometimes. But like day. even when it's dark, as, as it's not pitch black. There's a reflection somewhere and it's picking the reflection up. It yeah. is still going to distract or like take over space on that. And even still, it's very dim and very yeah. low resolution. I know that, like, the reflections don't bother me that much. I, I see them and I notice them, but I can mostly pay attention to the eyes. It's just the fact that that lenticular film, like, makes the resolution pretty low. Really low. And then also the brightness just needs to be a and lot better. And the viewing angle is really bad. Like I'm saying, right now I'm seeing yeah, the one of Marquez's terrible. eyes. Right. And, like, a lot, unless you're kind of in a perfect, like, five-degree angle where you can see both of them. It's almost like, you know, those protective business uh, screen protectors yeah, yeah, yeah. that people put on their 
their it feels like privacy shield privacy shields yeah yeah i have a hot take for this okay even if eyesight was perfect it's still a dumb idea (laughs) well it's funny though no dude i kind of like it just take it off even though it's okay if you're looking at someone just take just take it off no 100%. 100%. Well, okay. well l- riddle me this. Do you think transparency mode in headphones is a dumb idea? That's yes. A- Just take it off. Dude. Okay. <laughs> okay. We I agree on that one. I like, I like Adam's Adam. boomer route. Me personally, <laughs> as a fellow boomer, I would take my headphones out with transparency mode. I would take this off. But I do understand that we've gotten to the point where we're okay with technology and that isn't considered rude. So this <sighs> may be in 10 years. I see that being okay. I still feel If it rude, were working. But- I feel like I, I don't feel like Marquez is being rude by looking at us through this. Well, we also told him to put it on. <laughs> no, I yeah. Don't I think it I is. I don't know. Rude, I think it's, and less it's of... also just weird. You think someone should take the headset <laughs> off to talk to you? Yes. Just take I don't, it off. I feel like it's the same thing. I've I've had to slowly get used to like when I have headphone like noise canceling headphones on, leaving them on but switching to transparency mode and then talking to the person and then once they leave how fast do i turn the music back on yeah you know that's why the sony thing where you can just touch it and then talk to them and then let go is pretty cool yeah yeah but yeah this still has the the first gen drawback of still being very notable and pretty big and awkward so imagine i don't know first gen it's hard to make like a comparison because there's nothing quite like it. But like Oculus the first gen iPhone when it came out was a pretty expensive, pretty weak, technically speaking, device that just had some revolutionary magical feeling Managed controls. To zoom. You know? Yeah. So I feel like, feels like that. this argument's come up a lot, not just on this, but also in other things we've talked about. Um, AI pin rabbit R1. Where it's like the, when the iPhone first came out, yeah, everyone like, thought it was ter- yeah. like doesn't make sense. Or when the iPad first came out, the reactions were this. It's like they're all really reasonable reactions. And sure, this could go a long way, but like that we shouldn't just disregard all of the things that feel yeah. like they don't make sense I just think, because maybe in the future this will be awesome. Yeah, I saw some of those and I totally agree. I think you have to draw more parallels than just when it first came out, people didn't like it. Mm-hmm. I think there are certain things about it that people don't like yeah. and certain things about it that are the reason why it ended up overcoming that stuff. Right. So like if you look, if you just go to first gen iPhone, if you want to use that example, yeah, it was super expensive. That's an obvious reason why a lot of people didn't get it. It was also a carrier exclusive. But also, there were no apps. Oh, you yeah. couldn't change your wallpaper. There were lots of restrictions. It Just didn't like have this. Flash in the browser. <laughs> yeah, lots of restrictions. <laughs> but when people used it, they really felt very intuitive with the controls, with the direct manipulating the thing on the screen. And that was new and really, really fun and intuitive to use. And so people wanted that idea to continue and blossom despite all of its downfalls. And now you draw the parallels to this. Okay, I think what Apple is probably trying to feel like is, all right, revolutionary input device. How do we do this again? The eye thing where you look directly at the item you're controlling is very impressive. It feels very, very close to like psychic, like magic. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it is kind of annoying. Yeah, fatiguing. It is kind of annoying. Fatiguing, for sure. Yeah. I did I did actually get to put it on and try it briefly, so now I know what you guys are talking about. I don't know if we want to hop into that right away, but yeah, the, the clicking things with your hand was really cool. And I mean, like, pretty much by your side. It's cool until like you're worked. kind of annoyed by it. When, you have it's, to, when you're using an interface where you have to do it a lot, like if you're trying to use that for the keyboard and do that, yeah. it kind of hurts your eyes because our eyes are not used to doing this. They're used to, like, snapping and staying there and then snapping back. And They're it's not... Like, like it kind of gives me a headache, yeah. you know? And yeah. also on top of that, until you feel comfortable, it's not just like you're looking at A-N-D-R-E-W. You're looking at A, up to that register, N, up to that register, D, up to that re- Like you're adding another thing every time. And you have to understand now that if you look back at the screen, you're not looking at the keyboard. So it's essentially an extra input every time. There is a time. really weird thing that your brain does when you're trying to use this headset where your body and your brain says, I need to move my head in order to change what I'm what I'm uh, selected on, mm-hmm. but you really just have to move, move your eyes. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like the like patting your head and rubbing your belly thing. Like you only need to do one of them, mm-hmm. but your body is just like, I need to be looking around. But it is still an extra input because it's following your eyes. So if you think about it, you don't just go D A V I D. You go D up V up. 
Yeah, no. Uh, so it's no. like, yeah, it's, it's way more input, but it's still more that you have to process. You have to rub your belly and pat your head. Yeah, like, it's, like it's hard. Yeah. It's yeah, hard. it's the it's as soon as you start to try to do more than one task at once, that's when it becomes a little bit of an extra step to have to look at exactly what you're doing. Like any like if you're just using a Mac and you have a window open and your input device is your keyboard, you're not staring at your keyboard as you input. You're looking at something that you're not controlling. That's the difference. You're looking at something that you're not controlling. Where in this, if I if I have a window open and a keyboard, I can stare at the keyboard the entire time as I type, but the second I look up to check it, none of the typing works. I'm now just tapping things that I wasn't intending to tap. I have to look back down at the keyboard. And there's all kinds of little moments like that. Like if I have more than one window open, when I have like my Mac connected and I have a Vision Pro app over here. Yeah. What's awesome is my keyboard and trackpad still work. So if I have a Messages app open over here and the Mac here, I will look over at the Messages app the keyboard and trackpad still work. Yeah. I'll reply to a message in the Vision Pro app with the Mac keyboard. Yeah. But then I look back as I'm finishing typing the message and it's it now typing context. back in Google Docs. Oh. Can we do we know if we confirmed so that's when you're connected to your Mac? Mm -hmm. Have we confirmed you can connect a Bluetooth keyboard or something straight to it? Yeah, you, you can. can. You can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there enough computing power to run multiple things where like you see that as a valid option or does it make more sense to be connected I would to a I Mac? would use a Oh, you're saying would you go on the go and compute without even the Mac at all? Yep. Uh, that's one of the questions I pulled from chip. YouTube, so I'll oh, just scratch really? that off. I mean, it's no, that's M2. a good question. I think it's an M2 chip with the Safari it, and... In my eyes, that makes the difference between... It's a netbook. This, it's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> is that, like, they're selling this as, like, this new computing input device, right? Mm -hmm. If the difference between is I don't have enough bandwidth to just throw a Bluetooth keyboard on this, then to me that this is just a new monitor, not a new computing system. Sure. Sort of. Obviously, there's a lot more nuances there. Yeah, but. I think uh, so. The apps that are built in, you can get real computing done. It's not quite as powerful as if you know your way around a Mac or mm -hmm. a computer. So if I'm just doing like Google Docs writing and I have a couple tabs open, some browser windows and researching and writing a script or something like that. Yeah, I could do this without a Mac at all. Uh, but the second you have like four different apps open at the same time, and maybe one of them is only available on the Mac, or maybe you wanted Spotify in the background, but now you have to have that as a browser tab, like it starts to get annoying. Okay. I, I have a question. Yeah. You can have Safari as an app that you can run in Vision Pro, but they only allow you to do one display of Safari. Did they ever say- No, you can, no. No? So Safari, you can have as many windows and as many tabs open in Vision Pro. Okay. I actually don't know the limit, but you can have more no, than one. Don't tell David that. <laughs> yeah, oh, David? sorry, it's the, Mac, it's the Mac thing. Right. So but if you're paralleling Mac. from oh, your Mac, right. you can only uh, you can display have... one window of your Mac, and then you can have other stuff. Exactly. Did they say why that's the case? They didn't say why. Uh, I, I wonder if that's a compute thing, if that's a... Because it'd be really nice if I was editing in Final Cut, but I also had some other Mac application that I wanted to... Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that, that's the first thing I wanted to do. I mean, my editing setup in Final Cut Pro is two monitors. One full screen with the video preview, so if I want to do animations or text or color yeah. graphics, and then the yeah. other with the timeline and the, the bin, clip yeah, so, spin and everything. That's so frustrating, and I don't understand why that's a limitation. It's not the same thing like they don't have enough PCIe lanes, because that's what they did with the M1 chip, and why so, they don't allow multiple displays on the MacBook Air. Yeah, I would suspect it's something to do with, I mean, it's literally wirelessly transmitting this to the headset. I, would, yeah. I suspect there's just an, a total amount of pixels that you can mirror before it gets crazy. And you know what's funny? So we were doing, when we were it's making this review, yeah. there's two ways to screen record, actually. Yeah. You can screen record using the built-in screen recording in the headset, and that will show you exactly what I'm seeing, but it'll export a 1080p video and the video will have what's called foveated rendering, mm -hmm. which means that only what I'm looking at with my actual eyeballs is sharp and in focus. And if you look around the rest of the frame, you'll notice it's actually lower blurry resolution. and lower resolution yeah. and out of focus. Mm -hmm. And that's because that's totally fine for the way I see it in the headset. If I look down the middle at some text and that's crisp and rendered, my eyes don't really care about what else is happening in my field of view. Right. The other way to screen record is to connect it to Xcode and it's in developer mode, and then we can do full resolution screen recordings on the Mac. Without foveated rendering. Without foveated rendering. Mm -hmm. And we have some of those clips as well in the review. Those clips all stutter the headset. They slow it all down. Hmm. Any scrolling starts to get choppy. Interesting. And that's just more 
sharp pixels being rendered and sent. And I, I do think there's a compute limit somewhere in there. So maybe that's why they... I kind of feel like that's one of the reasons why I can't do two Mac displays. The I can't interesting thing about that, though, is that like the Mac is the thing that's power that's processing everything so the only yeah. thing that's coming in is the wireless input is the input yeah, yeah just a bit that's that just means well, the bandwidth thing yeah yeah in terms of i guess just a bit like in terms of just a window it would be so sick if in a world where final cut straight up is on this and you're like i just have this like giant timeline oh, and yeah. then your your viewing screen is pushed back and like a big wide screen and you have like all your color wheels over here. So that and would require like, Final Cut for Vision bro, Pro. That would be nasty. And I want be, that. I, yeah. I feel like so much of this podcast is going to be speculating how sick an app <laughs> could be inside of this. Yeah. But that would also mean my media has to also be on the Vision Pro. Bro, you... <laughs> it comes in. I've got the terabyte, terabyte store. <laughs> yeah, the last video was well yeah. over. A terabyte. <laughs> yeah. So that's tough. Ellis. But yeah. Oh, I just want Sorry. to say not to defend the the old uh, Zuckerberg skull cooker, but on MetaQuest <laughs> Pro <laughs> and three, uh, that thing gets hot. <laughs> My brow is sweating, but um, you, I can run three full size monitors on the remote desktop. Oh, do you there. happen to know the resolution of those desktop? Models? I will have to double check, but it seems like they run them in full resolution. Ooh, I really it might don't. be foveated. No, maybe, but it's because I have the square monitor and then a <laughs> oh, normal the dual up, baby. 10, 16 monitor. Right. And then so it it does like the square and it the populates 10 by 16. As, a, as a dual up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and cool. then I can add a third monitor that doesn't even exist in real life. That's okay. Also so that's interesting. I I think there may be a difference in the process of what they're doing. I'm sure, yeah. I think that what's happening in the quest is literally screen mirroring. That wouldn't surprise me. And yeah. what's happening in the Mac is a virtual, it's a new virtual display. It's not mirroring the screen of the mm. Mac. So it's a totally new resolution right. of of new yeah. rendering oh. happening. And now that I think about it, I don't think they're full resolution displays. Because when you take off the headset and look at my computer monitors, they're cropped by about two thirds. Yeah. So. And then it's rendering, it's mirroring that. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I know that everyone makes parallels to the iPhone, and I think it makes sense to make parallels to these things. I just want to say that, like, correlation does not equal causation. Totally and fair. Yeah. Something that, like, everyone loves to say, oh, because it doesn't make sense and it's new and expensive, that means it will succeed. And, like, that's obviously not true. And then also, the iPhone had a very clear thing of you can replace your iPod and your phone and this. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? You <laughs> can replace three these three things in one. And this is like, uh, you can do yeah. stuff yeah. in and, VR. And when, <laughs> when he said that, the crowd instantly was like, oh, we're getting it. Yeah, we're you getting know? it. Whereas this is just like, it's it's not replacing anything, really. It's just Here's... a new paradigm completely, which is something that has to be Yeah. Seen. Okay. Here's two uses that I think are totally unique to Vision Pro. And also, I just want to note, we've just passed 20 minutes on the timer. Yeah. I'm feeling the first of the fatigue start in the middle of my forehead now. And, and, and this is with with dual strap. With the dual, the dual loop. Better yeah. strap. Uh, but two things that are totally unique to Vision Pro. One is, and it's super niche, but it's editing videos on the plane. And I could probably expand this to doing a bunch of things on an airplane, but take someone like me, for example, trying to edit in Final Cut Pro on a laptop on the plane, but it's a top secret Vision Pro unboxing, so the person next to me can't see it. Or I'm just uncomfortable with that person seeing what I'm editing, whatever. A Vision Pro unboxing, but you're wearing the Vision Pro. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a new top secret thing. It's an embargoed uh, our, uh, one plus 12 review. Okay, so that's happening on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> so the person next to me, I don't want them to be able to see this. So I literally, I have the headset on, it blacks out my Mac's display. Uh -huh. And now not only are they, is the privacy a now factor, I can now make the display as big as I want. So I have a new larger display I can take with me anywhere I go. There's probably coffee shop people that would do the same thing, but I'm using the airplane as the example. That's a new thing for Vision Pro. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, I mean, technically just watching VR videos or watching videos in a virtual theater environment or something like that, like this new media watching experience, which this could be the largest display, the largest TV in somebody's life, technically. 
This that you can only watch by yourself. That you can only yeah. watch by yourself <laughs> and only watch things that are into the headset via Apple TV or Disney Plus <laughs> or and or Safari or and doesn't have any inputs to play games that aren't on the headset. Small cat. But it's super huge. fruit ninja though. <laughs> <laughs> this is like making me do you remember when there was that trend of people like taking this or buying broken MacBooks so they could just use the computer and the keyboard? Yeah. Or, that seems like it could potentially happen for this. Like that on the plane, yep. then you don't have your screen open and the person Yo, in front of you potentially really leaning funny. back and snapping Yo, give your me the screen keyboard off. deck. Yeah, just but the yeah, deck. The, just yeah. the deck. Yeah, that that would be. Sick. I also found that's it, a short or a video. That's yeah. potentially funny. I found a Verge article about when that happened. It's called "Honey, I Decapitated the MacBook." <laughs> Converting the laptop into the slab top is surprisingly free. <laughs> Andrew, you yeah. discovered a really funny prank with the Vision Pro a few days ago too. Did I? Where you slid your arms? Oh. Mm. We did confirm this works. The scenario of this happening never would really yeah, happen. Yeah, please don't do this to people. But do you know how like there's times where I don't know if you're in like class or something and you have to do a challenge where one person is like the arms of the other person. You're like behind them and you reach through their through their yeah. under their armpits. Yeah. So yeah. Marquez was in the Vision Pro, put his arms behind his back, and I slid my arms through his, and then he looked at things and went click, and I I could click my hands and it would start. It yeah. would register all of them. It would register. Despite our complexion being quite different. Yeah. Um, still I think work. Vision Pro fairly assumes that if there are hands in this <laughs> bubble, they're probably yours. But you're right. You can totally hijack someone's. It's so experience. reminiscent of the, what was it Pixel 4 controversy of being able to unlock someone's phone with their face without their eyes being open? Mm. So you could like do face unlock, just like shine it at your partner while they were sleeping. Mm. And then there was the whole controversy of like, if you're doing that, you should yeah. not be dating. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then uh, Google actually issued an update, so it had to use your eyes. Oh, really? It to, like blink. I forgot about it. Had to, it just like registered your eyeballs, yeah. To yeah. be fair, yeah. after we tested that, we did test your hands being out and me just putting my hand in and trying to click, and it did not work. Yeah, yeah it can only do one set of hands. Yeah. Oh, man, Thanks there's so many more. We should try one of your hands and one of my hands. I think it would be fine. I think it would work. I mean, I think that's good because... Uh, I don't know, maybe you are a person that has like a prosthetic hand and if it just re recognizes any hand and it doesn't have to be yours, really prosthetic hands, point. that's better. Pinch? Yeah, they pinch. There are certain mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that would still work. Yeah, I think that's a good accessibility thing. Yeah. And I don't think it's that much of a security risk. No, it's that would like almost never happen. It's on your face. But it was <laughs> funny that it did happen. Also, even if you put your hands through the other person's like, like, armholes you can't see what they're seeing so why does it matter it would have yeah. to be so specific like your screen mirror you have to be like <laughs> look at safari look at it look at it look click it. yes okay now look at the url bar <laughs> mkbhd.com i want to yeah. make a movie about that heist all right well we're at 28 minutes now i haven't taken it off yet i think we should take a quick break and maybe when we come back we'll do some like q a like rapid fire stuff because i still I, i'm telling you i got all the answers i just need to all format all my thoughts for the review video but we should do that so, before we do that quick break, we should do modified trivia. Trivia. I refuse to believe Marquez isn't searching the answers. In oh, the I was about to say that. <laughs> Huge trivia. Actually, yeah, I'll know question? when he's, what's Wait, the question? So you're saying, what was the first year that the statue of was born? <laughs> that wasn't a was valid born? question. But I'm just saying, you could, oh no. <laughs> I hate this. I really don't want this to get normalized. <laughs> it bothers me. June, June right. 17th, 1885. <clears throat> really? That was, you just did that? That was when the Statue of Liberty was, I know, was delivered. Yep. Wow. Yeah. 1885. Right. I, I don't know how to enforce it's fairness. Like two years after. Here. Because we, we can watch him yes. typing in yeah. the air. Yes. <laughs> okay, points don't matter for this one. How about yeah. that? But he can type with his well, eyes, though. He can just go like... You may have noticed Marquez has said this is both modified trivia and points-free trivia, and he's correct. That's because yesterday we taped the latest installment of Waveform Trivia Extravaganza, which should be out next week. I but, won. I won. Uh, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I shouldn't say. <laughs> Adam won. It's Adam won. <laughs> I won. Really, Adam and I are the winners every time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I know you're doing something because I see that blue glow. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Jimmy, <laughs> pay attention to me. Okay. Luckily for us, <laughs> I'm pretty sure this question is both ungoogleable and a little sneak peek of the kind of stuff that you guys are going to hear next week in Trivia Extravaganza. So 
Marquez Andrew David, which legendary mobile device was more expensive at launch? 1996's Palm Pilot Professional or 2002's T-Mobile slash Danger? Sidekick. Sidekick. Marquez, if you will not be able to Google this question. <laughs> Challenge I, I accepted. I promise. So if I ask... What are, you, what are you clicking? I see it. We don't have a camera that has Marquez's hands on screen, but he's clicking away right now. So if I ask someone for a PPP loan, would it mean the small business loan that was given out for COVID or a Palm Pilot professional loan because it was so expensive? Wait, Palm Pilot professional, what was the other thing called? The, P the PPP loan. It's like no. the small business loan that the government gave people. During it's a, well, I don't know. I, I You deserve to know the question because you have to answer it, but I don't trust you. Okay. PPP loan is Paycheck Protection Program. They we'll gave it to right. small business. We'll, right we'll, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. This episode is brought to you by Visible Wireless. Okay, so Visible Wireless is one of our partners and they're pretty great. They asked me to talk about why Visible might not be interesting for you. Pretty refreshing, right? So Visible's base plan with unlimited 5G data on Verizon's network for 25 bucks a month works great for lots of people, so what's not to love? Well, they're all digital, so you do everything from managing your plan to getting customer service right in their app. So if you love to handle everything without ever needing to talk to a human in a store, Visible's great. But if you need a shop for a new phone in person, Visible probably isn't for you. Someone like Verizon might be a better choice. If you want your wireless bundled with a bunch of extra stuff, don't switch to Visible. But heads up, you're gonna have to pay for that extra stuff. Visible is focused on the wireless part of wireless. So if you want more than unlimited 5G data from your wireless plan and to pay top dollar for it, then by all means, don't switch to Visible. Don't even go to visible.com to learn more. You get it. Rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see visible.com. All right, welcome back. Before we hop into questions, mm -hmm. I just thought of an app idea for the Vision Pro. Okay. Okay, so you app see App developers, the, get ready. App developers, get ready. Yeah, get so coding. you see eyes when you are looking at someone, right? So the whole thing is that you are looking at them and you're paying attention to them. Yes. And it's mm -hmm. glossed over when you're in something. Can someone make an app that just shows your eyes so that when like you're, you know, playing on the Vision Pro, doing something cool, and then like your mom or your sister comes and distracts you, you can just turn it on so they think you were paying attention to them, but you're uh, really still in Vision Pro. So it you just could, disables the blue glow. Yeah, and then shows your eyes. You could call After, it real eyes, real eyes, real eyes. <laughs> just call it real eyes. Real lies. <laughs> True lies. Damn. Just saying. <laughs> True lies. Get that going. way you can stay in your VR even when your pesky parents are trying to get you to do things. Should I keep this headset on for this entire second you should. segment? You should keep it on for the whole, I wanna see if you can last the entire episode. Okay. Even the segment that doesn't have to do with Vision Pro. I will try. Mark, cause I have a question. Yeah, go now for that, it. Yeah, you've been wearing it for half an hour. Like, yeah. do you feel eye strain in the same way the Oculus series no, sometimes do? No eye strain. Damn. The strain with Vision Pro is purely weight. I wanna use it purely. longer, but the first three times I used it, I used it for about half an hour, and then afterwards, for about an hour, I couldn't focus on anything close to me. Does that mean we need glasses? It, it makes our eyes <laughs> me? hurt. Me? Yeah, I because the Oculus makes I, my eyes hurt. Bro. You know what I think is part of it? So the default with Vision Pro is, is pass-through mode. So you don't really spend a lot of time in virtual environments unless you decide to. So most of the time, you're looking at what the camera feed is showing you from the outside. And it does look very, very close to real, but it is notably a little bit more compressed dynamic range like it's a little muted yeah like if you were showing me like an super camera. bright like if this light up here was actually dramatically brighter in the headset i think that would be more fatiguing but when i look at the light oh the shutter speed changes and everything gets dimmer like everything stays kind of within this sort of right uh it's still small range. It's like what the iphone does yeah it's the it same. still is a screen though burning your eyes it is a screen wait shutter speed doesn't change does it i thought iso only changed no, it changes shutter speed too. It changes both. So and it gets like weird if you are if you, in low light. If no, you get, the shutter so speed that's is a good question. always high. It's just that it adjusts in a high range, so you can't uh, tell yeah. the difference. Okay. So if you, but good question. If you go to low enough light, uh -huh. what happens? The question, or the, the answer most people suspect is it would get really wonky and bad. What mostly happens is Apple tries to keep shutter speed high enough to keep things crisp, and in order to do that, you have to crank ISO. Camera yeah. people, you know that usually results in a lot of noise. So yes, when you're in low light, it tries to keep things visible and sharp, and therefore it is more noisy. 
and it adds this noise reduction and softens things a bit, and it okay. looks like you're looking at a low light camera feed. Yep. So it looks it, it works way better in well lit environments. It's an like iPhone strapped to your face. Set. Yeah. 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 It's a camera. Uh, okay. What else do you want to know? You are big on to do apps, and you Huge. mentioned it does have a to do app. Mm -hmm. What is the to do app? It just you pin it and it has a checklist. In Vision Pro. Yeah. So there is no to do it, app. I'm looking at the. Oh, there's no to do app. apps. Yeah. So I've installed my own, which okay. is an iPhone app, and it shows up in the compatible apps. Any iPad app, mm -hmm. basically any iPad app where the developer has checked the box and maybe that adds a few lines of code, it will show up in the App Store and that will work. So there, oh, there is Things. So recently, the to do list app called Things added a Vision Pro specific app. Okay. I haven't tried it yet. It's like 30 bucks. I imagine there's some fun, immersive features that they've added that I okay. haven't tried. It's 30 bucks? Things 30, is crazy. Things is 30 like bucks 30 for... bucks per platform. What? I bought Things <laughs> for Mac and it was $50. And then I went to go download the iPhone version and it was like five more dollars, please. <laughs> Wow. Wow. And it's thirty more dollars in the VR headset. Anyway, so things, please don't do that. Really, thirty bucks? Yeah. Okay, cool. Is it good? It's good, but it's not on Android, so I can't. Really... <laughs> mm, yeah. This is my idea for for a, a to do list app in VR, and for mm -hmm. thirty bucks, I think it better do this. Mm -hmm. You should be able to pin your to do things on different things throughout your a house. Thousand percent. Like, no, 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 no. Yes. What do you mean? No, no. Yes. The, you, the laundry basket. I should... walk by and I see a little thing that's like. Finish long. No, 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 no. It's what it should be is different priority tasks are given different speeds and they gradually chase you around. <laughs> so the things that you really have to get done, you turn around and it's like, okay, it's now towards that you. That is an app yeah. idea. Meanwhile, the less important yeah. things, they're just sort of a zombie <laughs> speed talking, you know? You know what Joanna did in her review? I haven't tried this app yet, but there's that, a cooking app. Yeah. And there's a, it'll have like a recipe that stays like pinned on the cabinet and you can always look over at it and it'll be able to set timers for you and you can that. hold the timer down and place it on the thing that it applies oh, multiple to. timers too. so yeah, like multiple a, a, yeah. a pot could have like a five minute Boiling timer water for your timer, timer, oven timer. Could, that's exactly yeah. what she did in the video she yeah put it it over the two, wow. two different yeah. things that's it was cool kind of awesome. but at the same time um you could just cook <laughs> <laughs> Which we've but, been doing for thousands okay. of years. Let him cook. <laughs> Let him cook. So this is the thing. There are lots of instances where it's like, you could just do it the way you've always done it. And I, I feel agree. feel like it's a lot more effort to I add all of these things but, on top of your world. But the promise of how great it could be if there was a lighter, better version of this headset is amazing. Okay. So yeah. did you see this on Twitter? There's like a vacuuming uh, <laughs> app. I that. Yeah. And it was literally, oh, yeah, yeah, it yeah, literally, yeah. You've, have you seen this? I've seen this. It it's, literally just looks at what you're vacuuming and will highlight it so that you know where you haven't oh, vacuumed. I, wait, yeah, I, I can ex that. complete the level of I, your house. I, I, I can that. explain it to Ellis where he'll probably understand. Have you ever watched Power Wash Simulator games? <laughs> Yo, I I need I need this. You haven't seen that? No, no, I know what oh, you're okay. talking about. Just like I'm I'm so bad at maintaining the grid pattern when I vacuum. <laughs> yep. This you is know? exactly what you need. This is should like... grade you after also yeah. Yeah. on like your the, lines. Like the Mr. Beast <laughs> touch app thing. Here's another one. While we're talking about possible killer apps, there is a render somebody made of like watching an F1 race. Hold on, I'll pull him up. He DM'd us actually. Okay. So you know how hard it is normally to watch an F1 race? You're just looking at the camera feed and it's just cutting back and forth between a bunch of different like placement races, but you don't really see the whole track yes. and you don't know what's going on and where they are. So there was this render somebody made. I don't think it's a real app. John Lepore okay. at Johnny Motion. So they had essentially the whole track layout on the coffee table. So you could see where all the cars were on the track, who was pitting, where the races were happening and feeds of the different races happening around the track. Yeah, I think he was watching the TV of the general feed and then his coffee table had the track with and all, the all those. Yeah, I forget if it was, I think it was cars, yeah. Yeah. Or at least just like where each number of each person was. Um, that would be better than the current way. Did he actually one. make this or he? I think it's a render. It's concept. a render, hold on, let it's me find it so you can see it. Yeah, it's really cool. This was posted on the Formula One um, subreddit and everyone was like their normal app doesn't even work there's zero yeah. chance that formula one's actually gonna but think but look that. how sick this is that's dope that stuff that i keep seeing on social media of like cool ideas people have that feels Excites like you. that's exciting for yeah. the future of this form factor yeah we're just I, not there yet i do think app developers should start making these apps now even though there's a chance that this form factor doesn't work out because Five years down the line, they're going to be on Vision Pro 2 or 3, and mm -hmm. 
I don't know. I mean, a big argument that people are making, uh, notably Netflix, YouTube, and Spotify are not on Vision Pro apps. And the kind of funny thing about that is that all iPad and iPhone apps automatically got ported to be working on Vision Pro unless you specifically opted out, which mm -hmm. means that they intentionally were like, no. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you're making a decision that you don't want to be on this new platform, right? Uh, but it it makes a lot of sense to like be in this new pair. I, I completely forgot, lost my train of thought, so I think you should just back up. Wait, I no, 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 hold on. And I totally can I, but I kind of wanted to go off that because you mentioned iPad apps. Yeah, and there is an Instagram app on this, right? I'm excited about the age of dashboards. If that's like the only contribution we really get out of this whole thing, is yeah. that like we we get more cool dashboards, like like the way you were describing the F1 race. That's essentially yeah. a dashboard with all these different stuff on it. Yeah, because it had like, it also had the leaderboard and it had like different exactly. ways you could or the, the, no the, pot, the cooking pot timer. No it's also a dashboard. I think There's the no fun thing is that we just like, there are so many things that we can't imagine yet that you could do in spatial stuff. And so people are way more creative than we are and are going to make things that blow our minds over and over again. Yeah. I that, feel like this is going to be great when the form factor is the meta glasses. Yeah. And right now it's just that's totally. But also when the form factor is the meta glasses, you know what you don't need? A screen on the front to show your eyes. That's a very good point. <laughs> and I think that's why it's okay. And I'm probably going to say this at some point in the review, but I, I'm pretty sure Vision Pro is the first time Apple's done a first-gen product with the word Pro in the name. Yeah. I think the first thing you do when you're Apple is make a non-Pro with no eyes, right? Like you mean, cheaper. You mean after this? After this, yeah. yes. So you have Vision Pro. It's got the eyes on the outside, and then you have Vision. Apple Vision, and it doesn't have the eyes, and it's missing a couple other things, but it's cheaper because that's less parts, and you can make a smaller, cheaper thing. But the idea will be the absolute best version of this is the closest to see-through glasses. And you keep going further and further towards see-through glasses until you can finally actually do see-through glasses and you don't need the screen anymore, I think. I, I feel like my argument against that would be is their reason for the eyes coming through is that it lets you be less disconnected from reality and lets you be that. So then why would you not have that on the version that more people are supposed to have and be using in yeah, the real world? That's fair. Yeah. I don't think that's something they would get rid of. I think that in vision they'll have Vision Pro 2 and then also release Vision regular vision and it'll just use the older technology. You yeah. know what's a real bummer about this whole thing? That a major Apple display manufacturer and supplier didn't just announce a uh, bezel-less micro LED transparent screen. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of they started development on this a long time ago. I, I know. Yeah. Well, the the joke is they did do that. Yeah, I got that joke. Nice. I okay. didn't. Cool. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, but I think I think maybe that is the marriage between the meta glasses and the um, and the the traditional VR scape is like like as micro LED transparency gets way way cheaper. Yeah. Um, you know, it wouldn't be that hard to map. The perspective of yeah everything. yeah or you could just see marquez's actual face through here but there could be a exactly there could be yeah. oleds that are lighting up in front of him that he's able to like see. that lg well, transparent tv well no, i was specifically thinking of the samsung one but wouldn't the issue in that be as if it was just is that all the things he's seeing out you would also see coming you back would in. also see yeah so well then it's like hard for me to like see his eye like this is trying to make it see so like he still has all these things but then he can connect with somebody where that would be i'm seeing all these things and they're looking at me but those things are still like a micro windows in my eyes and like blocking my eyes i, I think i see what you're saying i feel like if there was something blocking the person marquez was trying to connect with that he wouldn't be able to see them anyway so there'd be no mm -hmm. point in trying to make eye contact whereas if he moved it out of the way of his eyes but even if it was i don't know why i'm arguing this so hard yeah, it's <laughs> but like yeah. so marquez could have me looking straight at him like right like you're looking at me right now mm -hmm. you can have windows here 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 all around uh, me right oh, yeah and right. i'm just seeing your eyes but to him since it's such a small glass if it was just that i would just see all these things and it would probably be blocking his that's eyes. a good point and uh, Samsung at their micro LED uh, display demonstration did not let anyone see it from the back. So I have no idea what it's <laughs> like, like from the other side. Yeah. No, it is real. I mean, 
It's not real. Maybe. <laughs> Come on, L- Samsung. Geez, yes. LG that? is actually shipping. <laughs> LG's is real, but Samsung didn't say theirs was necessarily shipping. But LG's OLED from the back is a lot less transmissive when it's clear. It's like it looks sort of like fuzzy and uh, like darker and mm-hmm. I don't know shades. All right. All right. Well, what else do you want to know? More questions. Uh, someone is asking if you can use the virtual display thing on a Windows PC. No, <laughs> obviously not. Um, I thought that question before, so fair to them. I thought it was a great question. Do you, to be fair, why? Marquez before said to. mirroring a computer, and I was like, computer? Yeah, that's Any exactly. Com- yeah. No way. Uh, like you get all the best things yeah, with an Apple computer, but you should be able to just have a display up of your Windows on the side. Yeah, yeah. Well, they would probably Windows. sell more because they're like isolating out. Well, at the same time, the entire point of the Vision Pro is you have all your Apple apps in your headset. But... Does the Quest Pro do Windows? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think doesn't. it only does Windows. Uh, oh, it does no, it definitely Mac. does, it does Mac. Mac, but it definitely oh. seems like the Windows is what they advertise. Yeah. And, and the Mac is like, you can use this if you really want. <laughs> They're heavier into Windows for sure. Um, I, go ahead. This is just kind of my own question, and I'm pretty sure I know the answer to, but I guess yeah. your way around, remember before you wanted multiple Windows like from your Mac? So if you have, say, Final Cut open, but you want a Safari window open, would you just do Final Cut and then pin a Safari app off to your right? Yeah, and then you'd still have it, but can you only type in that Safari app then with your eyes and virtual keyboard, or can you still use your? You can use your correct your real keyboard. So I could have Final Cut open. I could have iMessage over here. I could yep. have like Safari. So as long as it's an app, you can add extra windows. Yep. Yeah. Effectively, yeah. when you look at it, it switches focus, right? And then yeah, and then your typing. keyboard works on there. The annoying cool. thing about that though is like sometimes I'll be typing something and then someone will start talking to me and I'll <laughs> I'll finish my typing as I'm talking to the person exactly because I don't need to be looking at my computer because I know how to touch type but it you just yeah. can't do that mm-hmm. you can't multitask that's really funny you can't actually. multitask because your attention is what you are computing is and you're task. not allowed you can't multitask that's that's like you're gonna have like a pop-up ad or something in Safari and then you're just gonna divert your vision and not realize you were like typing half a sentence in there and now you've lost it in your first I'll put I'll get I'll have this all extremely well laid out in the in the review because I think it's the most unique aspect of computing on the Vision Pro. Is the like looking or is the fact that your attention is your task. Only that. Only your task. It's it's like great for multitasking, but at the same time basically (laughs) impossible to multitask. multitask. Yeah. 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 I mean you can have things happening in the background. You can have Apple Music off to the side playing music. You can have, yeah. but like, yeah, yeah, it's one at a time. Yeah, but that's not, music playing in the background is not really like what you're paying attention to. It's just ambient. Yeah. Yeah. There are some, when you have, when you're FaceTiming with someone else in the Vision Pro mm. and you get their weirdo persona. Polar Express persona. <laughs> it <does look laughs> like the Polar it's so funny. <laughs> Actually, that's the closest <laughs> I've yeah. ever heard. Mm-hmm. It does um, look like the Polar Express. Can you, is it a set size window of them or can you have, can I be giant if you're talking to me? Can there, can I be a giant floating head you're talking to? Okay. So when I'm wearing the Vision Pro and I'm in FaceTime, Mm -hmm. my FaceTime experience is my camera feed is just my persona. And what I see is floating glass like windows of everybody else on the FaceTime, Mm -hmm. whether they're a webcam or another Vision Pro persona. I can then drag the entire thing bigger to make those windows bigger. Okay. Yep. And what's kind of amazing about this is you can you can put them across the, the room on the wall. You can move them to the right and to the left. And the thing that they see when you move it is accurate to the angle that you just moved it to. So if I put the Vision Pro window on the ceiling, they will see the top of my persona's head. If I put it behind me, you will see blank because my persona- I can't has tell if I like that or not. Well. I think, so this was going to bring me up to my next point, which was when we FaceTimed him on your computer, David, Mm -hmm. the other day, where we were just a regular. So you saw a window of David's webcam. Mm -hmm. We saw a window of your persona. Yeah. And I think that makes sense if you're talking to other personas. But for us, when you turned around or literally got out of the box, you just disappeared. Mm -hmm. Or like- Which is what would happen if you were on a normal computer, too. Also true. I guess, but like it makes it feel like the whole point of this is that it is now strapped to your head and you could potentially walk around in FaceTime, but that would not work because Uh, you would leave the window. So if you have the window like really, really big, far away on the wall across the room, you can kind of walk around and always be in. in Is that what we would see? We should test that to see. We can test that, Are you smaller than that The thing is like, yeah, if I'm I'm FaceTiming with like my mom, but I want to go into the kitchen to grab something, I don't want to disappear out of the frame. (laughs) 
Right. Even though I know that's what would happen on a computer, mm -hmm. uh, I also could carry my computer to the kitchen. Or you, you your phone. My phone. You carry yeah. your phone around as you're walking through your apartment. You do one of these. And also, this is supposed to be better than those. The whole time, just take them with you. You dragged it. <laughs> I yeah. guess. I mean, I think that Apple's trying to make it feel as close to an actual computing experience as possible. Because, for example, when we were FaceTiming you, I was using my laptop, which is to the left of me because my main display is in front of me. So you did see the side of my face. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what would happen if I saw if you had your window pinned to the side of your face. Yep. So technically, it is exactly how a computer would work. It's just not, in my opinion, like the ideal form of how I want to interact with you. So One would... major downside. You can't show anything to the camera. <laughs> Because it's I just that your, it's I just your saw face. You do this and like only your hand showed up. Yeah. So yeah. when you move your hands around in front of the headset, it does actually render a pair of hands that match your skin tone, which is kind of neat. But I obviously can't show things to you, even though I could hold something up. That's a just huge down. Yeah. Wait. Can you not flip the camera around and show like what you're looking at? You can do that. You can uh, do that. You, you can hit okay. a button and show my view, and then I can okay. show you something. Okay. Th I bet that's why it's a window with your persona and not just a floating persona, because then that would look weird if you flipped around, and then it would have to like not be a perfectly shaped head and then be now a square that shows yeah. it. You know, it's funny, a lot of people were complaining because they're like, well, normally when I'm on video meetings, I can be on other tabs and stuff and they don't know. But now if I'm on, if I'm like looking in another direction or on another yeah, tab, then it'll see. be a lot more obvious. But I guess if you're using your phone, you could just kind of like put it in front of you and they wouldn't be able to see. That's true, that's true. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You know, it's funny, you can also make eye contact with individual people in the FaceTime. What do you mean? End of, like, so if I'm FaceTiming three people and in my Vision Pro, I look at one of the people, mm -hmm. the other two people see slightly off axis because okay. I'm only making eye contact with one of the people in FaceTime. I yeah. realize that that is more like reality, but, but I, that, that also makes we, it hard to do a presentation. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. I also want to just go back like two steps on when we were saying like, well, if you're looking off to the side, that's what a computer and a phone would be. But like, this isn't a computer and a phone. I feel like we should have the step extra of being able to like, I just want to go walk to another room and not have to leave the camera. It just should have my face. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Do it's thirty five hundred dollars. But it, I think they want it to feel intuitive to like yeah, as normal real as life. Possible. I'm not saying that know. makes it better. Yeah. I'm I, just saying that their mindset and I assume is let's make this as like not different as not having a Vision Pro as possible. Can you connect it to a phone or an iPad the way that you use it with uh, a Mac? To see iPad. the iPad screen? Yeah. No. No? You can no. do the other way around. I can uh, I can mirror what I see onto an iPad. Okay. But I cannot oh, right. like virtual okay. iPad onto my screen. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. But you've got iPad apps everywhere anyway. So. Just real quick. Yeah. We're out about it. About an hour. Yeah. How you feel? How do you feel? I'm approaching the furthest I've ever gone without taking the headset off, like consecutively. I feel fine. Fine. Um, the the number one thing that's most annoying to me is the weight on my cheeks is starting to get heavy. And also, we haven't talked about this very much, but the field of view of this headset isn't actually super wide. It does feel like you've had ski goggles on. Yeah. It does feel like my, my peripheral is like bottled a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I normally on this podcast will just look over and glance at Adam and Ellis I now have to fully <laughs> look over because the yeah, edge of my that. peripheral is like, like I can't it see you. Blocked. I want to put them I back straight on up now and we like can't see you. Be yeah. cognizant of that. Because when I used it before, I didn't realize that. Yeah. I bet you that it was like that. I just didn't really notice. 100%. It's, it, it takes a couple uses before you start like poking around the edges and realizing how mm. limited it it's is. It's probably because you weren't in a scenario you're extremely used to where you, like Marquez is in a spot right now where he does that all the time and then notices it's not the same as yeah. that. So you were probably just using it out there and like yeah. didn't try to do things. Well, I was in Apple's demo to. space and yeah. I didn't have to look at anybody. Well, yeah, and you weren't like in a, in a like if you were at your desk and I said like, hey David, and like you turned around Around. like yeah. that's something you do every single day right. where if you tried to do that in that scenario it'd be like something was different about that yeah. i'm putting yeah. that, that reminds me that <laughs> my guys just turned like 180 <laughs> to look at me um david mentioning you you guys had demos with this yeah multiple demos which yeah. we spoke about previously but when you first set up the headset and put it on does it give you like a tour on how to use it i don't remember asking no it does it right not tour on really how to, no you really. only know how to use it because you went to the demos no wait i so the only so the here's here's what happens when you first get it 
Number one thing is you put it on and it says, hold the digital crown to align your eyes. You hold it down and it physically moves the lenses in place to match your eyes. Mm -hmm. Then the second thing that happens is you go around this series of dots where it says, look at the dot and then pinch your fingers together to select it. And that's a calibration process, but that's actually also you learning yeah, that training. whatever you look at is what you're selecting. Okay. Does a few rounds of that, then you scan your hands like this, and then you're in, and the app drawer is there, and you're free. I'll say I, I did try it very briefly. I was in your guest mode, but mm -hmm. at that point, the only way we did it is you basically allowed everything in the guest mode. So I didn't go through the full setup where I had to do my face, but I did all the tapping and hands. Yep. It's crazy intuitive. I was super, super impressed by it. But it literally is just like, yeah, you hold it. It changes where the like the the, the space are. where the lenses are, so you yeah. can see clearly. Then a uh, like a hexagon of dots comes up, and you just look at each one and press them. And when all of them press, it goes to another set of it. It's doing it in different brightness levels to try and gauge, I guess, what's the best brightness. But it told you to press your fingers together, right? Like, yeah, and okay, then. Yeah. You just like tap and then you go through that and then you're kind of just in the space and then you're like, yeah. Oh, and, and it, then the app drawer shows up. The app drawer shows up and it was very intuitive. I was just like moving things around. It, it does a good job, but when you start looking at things like the corner where you would drag it out or the bar it, like highlights it for yeah. a second. Um, and yeah, it's also it is a good point though that they don't have any sort of like tutorial. It was They're just interesting to me because even on the phone, there's like so many things you can long press and a new action will pop up that I didn't know was there forever. That's, I wonder how often well, it's going to happen. There is a lot of hidden UI. I mean, Apple has done that before, right? Didn't they not tell anyone about 3D Touch and no 3D Touch got know. launched? But like, I there are still things in Vision Pro apps where I will long press and go, oh, I didn't know that had an option. How did it. you find the control center thing? Only because they told you about it? Yeah, because they told me about it. So. The yeah, fact that you have to people... stare up at the ceiling to find oh, control. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know that, yeah. The only way you can access control centers is by looking straight up and seeing this little arrow, and then you tap it, and then it comes down into your view. When I was using it, I saw the arrow, and I just thought that meant, like, bro, there ain't anything up here. Look down. That's <laughs> like, I thought at first, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they don't want you to use control I'm very center. curious if, like, the consumer version of these that people start getting is, is going to have, This like, is a consumer version. They went all the way down also. Well, yeah, but it's also a review yeah. unit. There's no yeah, arrow. I thought I saw arrow when I was consumer versions. Unless they're, like alpha like not we got like a version that people will be getting in stores yeah this is what people will so get. but there is a uh, 10 minute guided tour of apple vision pro on apple's youtube channel that has surprisingly six and a half million views also true which is crazy because <laughs> well, that's a lot more views they usually get. and am i correct in saying that can you get this delivered to your house or do you have to go pick it up at an apple store if you you can get it delivered, but the apple store does have like this experience that they're going to give to yeah people. so i I would assume there's somewhat of a tutorial in that aspect of what, oh, yeah. because you have to, like this, the slots when people were buying them were filling up fast. So I'm assuming they are dedicating time to each of those slots. Man, shout out to this episode comes out on the second, right? Shout out to all the Apple employees. If you're on your way to work today, I'm sorry. It's going to be a rough one. <laughs> Probably the next week. Big kudos to all of you guys and stay strong. It's going to be a long one. It's funny how much, like, the more we talk about it, the more I kind of want it just to play with, but I, the more I also know that it will just be kind of a paper. Hold on. There's a perfect Reddit comment for this that I have to find. While you're finding that, mm -hmm. uh, question that I have actually hit me. Have you tried regular earbuds with it that are not? AirPods? No, but you can. So you can pair Bluetooth headphones directly to the Vision Pro. Yeah. You won't get, um, I think it's just spatial audio. But and also like, uh, the latency. Low latency. I want to know if that low latency actually matters. Mm. Because if you have anything but the newest USB-C AirPods Pro, yeah. there is a lower latency, there's a higher latency. I can try. But I want to know, like, does that actually really change anything? Yeah, I was using the virtual Mac display and then using my wired headphones plugged into the Mac, mm. and even that latency was low enough and totally fine. So, again, I'm not doing, I'm not gaming or like doing anything super sensitive to latency. So I'm, and even then, it's just audio latency. Yeah. So I'm not actually really minding. I want to play Dota on a massive screen and <laughs> and see if the <laughs> audio latency bothers you. No, just to play it. Oh, as a for sure. Play on the yeah. Vision Pro and see like if a... the bandwidth is high enough to like. Update that game fast enough. Yeah. Because native on Mac, so. Yeah, that's a... 
yeah, I want to play some sort of game or something. I feel like a first person shooter would just not work. The funny all, thing but... is like pe- like games like CSGO, pro players will actually get really small screens because they they don't you don't want to have to turn your head at all. You want to be ha- able to well, get everything in your peripherals. It is confusing though because there are people who despite having 24 is usually like the standard for that, which is like small in the computer world these days, but then they like put their nose to it. So they do kind mm-hmm. of have to like they put their nose against the screen. Look, if you look up some like pro CS players or over uh, Valorant players, they are like touching the screen. It's wild. Um, but I, yeah, I would like to try playing some games. Yeah, it yeah. sounds really cool. Yeah. Um, okay, wait. This is the comment I saw on our Apple on our unboxing video. Mm-hmm. They just said, "Do I want one? No. Do I want to play with one for an hour or so? Yes. Do I need it? No. <laughs> no, no. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a." Very fair. <laughs> yeah. Fair analysis. Yeah. That could be the title for one of the videos. It's like, yeah, I want to play with it for a couple hours, but I don't want to spend thirty five hundred dollars. Exactly. <laughs> it's like the you guys are asking before. How long do you think you're going to continue to use Vision Pro after the review process is over? What are you going to use it for? Mm-hmm. You use it every day. Are you going to stop using it? What's going to happen? Yeah. Are you going to use it? I think my main analysis so far is it still feels like a fun toy that I'll I would break out every once in a while. But I still also think there are a couple of things that are amazingly fun on it that I would want to use it for. Namely, the thing I keep talking about, which is on an airplane, using my Mac on a plane, watching a video on a plane. I cannot wait for the 16-hour flight I have coming up in a month to just watch videos on the plane and not even think about what's around me. That's going to be great. Uh, and I think also when some new games and fun stuff starts getting announced, th- not necessarily killer apps, but I think really much more fun apps. I'll, I'll yeah. You should wear this headset for the entire 16 hour flight. 16 hours is probably too much. <laughs> I'm probably going to want to sleep during that flight. Well, but if you were able to get a business class seat, you could lay down and have screens on the ceiling. Yeah, absolutely. I could, have sky guide. Oh, no, I could have sky guide on the ceiling and then I could look out the window of the plane and pick Ooh. the constellations out of the sky and bring them into the cabin and stare at them. Damn, we live in the future. I just Do want, it. can you, when you see the flight attendant coming with your first drink while you're wearing this, can you screen record? We won't post it anywhere <laughs> because I don't want to like post it there, but I just want to see it from here, yeah, what so their reaction when is. When I record videos on the outside, tell me what color this turns. So I'm going to take a video. I mean, uh, I can see like- I can see your eyes. 10% of the screen. So I'm recording a video now. What does that look like? It's oh, white. I've seen this. It like it's like white, it's flat, it's pulsing white. 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 This is yeah. just like the new Meta Ray Ban glasses. It's just like a the, blinking yeah. kind of a white glow. It, no part of it screams I'm recording right now. Yeah. I do not think this is a a good way of showing your recording. I mean, it's better than the original um, Google Glass, which didn't have any indicator. <laughs> yeah. That's what killed it, in my opinion. It should be red blinking, one hundred percent. That's yeah. like the only thing that screams, I am recording. Right yeah. Now. This white should blinking, say, I'm yeah. recording across the <laughs> screen. <text>. Literally, <laughs> or, if that was white and blinking and I was the steward or stewardess, I would have no idea. No, recording. not a chance. Yeah. I, I recorded a spatial video. So it does like really. the knockoff Nest Cam thing where it's like, hi, you are being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking the like, the like, convenience store screen that just scrolls letters across it that just says you are being recorded and just keep scrolling endlessly yeah that would be awesome also okay so you know those those memes that keep showing up which are they make perfect sense they're like <laughs> your mom i know in, what you're talking 1993 about. was like don't look too closely at yeah, the tv yeah. and then in 2020 we strapped the tv yeah. to our face yeah the weird thing about that is Technically, the focus distance of my eyes yeah. is further than it would be if a screen was up close to me. Yeah, because you're because looking. of the lenses. Right. So the way the lenses work, and I guess if I wanted to explain the way eyeballs work, like they literally are changing their shape when you focus at something further away. My focus distance is further now and less fatiguing now than if I had a screen super close yeah, to my face. That's a good point. Yeah. Not to ruin the meme, but that's just yeah. Keep me focusing on things. That's that's the whole reason that Tim Cook, when he comes on stage, he says. The Vision Pro is the first device that we don't look at, but through. The eyes on the outside look like the sloth from Ice Age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like your yeah. eyes look like further like apart and they're apart. not always quite looking at the same thing. And yeah. Yeah. The yeah. last dandelion. <laughs> I still really like it though. I actually prefer that. I definitely prefer this to not being able to see your eyes this whole podcast. I feel closer oh, to um, that. 100%. I think That's if true. it worked... Correct. Like if it well, had a good. Okay, David can see both of your eyes. Your eye I've access. only seen one eye yeah, the yeah, entire yeah. time. He's he's straight at I, me, so I can see both eyes. But I do 
You feel better now, Andrew? I feel weird only seeing one eye. No? You feel worse? I feel like I'm making eye contact. You are. so stretched. I can tell. Are you making eye contact with me? Because I feel like I am. Yeah, and you are. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's... It's technically working. I mean, it's not going to be perfect when you're slightly off axis, obviously. And Maybe I'm just more comfortable making eye contact with sloths than you are. <laughs> or with I've... virtual reality headsets. I In like Finding there's... Nemo, all the fish's eyes are on the front of their face. No, but I swear there was this one fish that had a really wide like face that. that is what you looked like. and <laughs> It's so weird. And I also can't see all of it. That's what's like it's so probably confusing. glary. Yeah. There's probably it's glare. Not, it's not all glare. It's a viewing question. angle. Is lenticular film like you need light from the outside to be able to see it correctly. Like I if, think if you're in it, cause the, the iPhone, for example, the for the original Nintendo Game Boy was, it was, it required reflections of light from the sun to be able to see it because there's no like backlight. Or oh, anything. right, right, right. Yeah. On this, can I see it better when there's a lot of ambient light? I don't think so, no. I think it's if you imagine a film, a literal le- hardware layer over the display, yeah. it is refracting in a way that shows a different image to each of your eyes. Yeah. So as you move in front of the display, it, it shows you different look. parts of the screen at yeah. the same time. I am glad they did that because it does look a lot better than just your eyes being pasted to the front of the vision. That is, it would make I it feel like true. It would make it feel like your eyes are just jutted out. Yeah. Whereas actually it weird. looks like it's around where it's supposed to be in, on your face. I think that's fair. Most okay. of the time it does. There are some angles where it's still, I think that there's specifically an angle in the first impressions video we put out where it's kind of from it's under like, you a bit yeah. looking up and your eyes just look like they are in a totally different place on your face than yeah. they actually are. So it works in some cases. That's I feel like that's the whole mantra of this front screen is like it works 15% of the time. And it works other, in the perfect center. Yeah. And, and I like make eye contact with and you. And in that scenario, it is still about 50% of what they showed off in all of the marketing material. Yeah. 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 Cool. Any other big questions that people had? Can you hot swap the batteries? Uh, yes. You can buy an extra battery, and surprisingly, a lot of people don't know this, the only way to actually turn the Vision Pro off is to take the battery off. It'll yes. just go into a standby oh. mode if you take it off, but the only way to, there's just like the AirPods Max, there's no on or off button. It just turns on when you put the battery on, and it turns off when you take the battery Wait, so off. you cannot hot swap Hold the batteries, though. So you cannot hot swap this battery. What you can do is daisy chain yet another battery to this battery right, and baby. hot swap that one while this one stays on. I know you can do Wait. that, but does Apple say you should do that? Oh, no. <laughs> but you Yeah, can't, that sounds like a serious fire. You can't answer. like leave it running and replace the main latch battery. Correct. No, because the way you David said take the battery off I know a lot of people and this when he explained this to me the other day, I was confused, but everyone's thinking that taking the cord out of where the battery is, it's taking the cord out of oh, where the, the headset, headset yeah. connects yeah. is how you can swap the battery. But obviously that is not hot swap because then it turns off. Oh, um, right. Oh, yeah. hot swap. Yeah. yeah hot swap. But you can't hot swap the battery. Yeah, you can't hot swap. You can, you can yeah, plug in. The you battery. can plug a battery into the battery. Yeah. You can or double. The wall. But you be careful. I, that's, uh, I, pro- I wouldn't do that. I would do I 10 would, batteries. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I would do that. Do that. You yeah. would? I, wouldn't. I would totally. I wouldn't put well, another battery to go into this battery. Why not? You would not. I don't think. Why not? That's that. the whole point. Well, that's an extra USB-C port. Nah, no, 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 no. Would you, you read the manual of like Anchor or any other? Who dis- reads uh, the manual, nerd? Bro, <laughs> I think manual. it's a battery, dog. So? Uncontrollable fire, my guy. I love putting batteries on my face. Wow. All right. Well, sorry, before sorry, we I give any correct. more uh, advice that will make your insurance rates go up, why don't we... Uh, <laughs> I'm buying life insurance on Marquez is... right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And we're back with another trivia round. Is this already that? incognito? Yeah, Marquez is just hopping <laughs> around. I can't see what you're doing. Back here in the meatverse, we're doing trivia. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys want science or tech? I like tech. science. Taylor's Science. version. I don't know. That's either all one. three different things. <laughs> I'm you guys okay do with whatever. either. Actually, yeah. Points don't matter. Points don't matter. Okay. I'm okay with either. Here's a question. All right. Okay. Electrons yeah. have an intrinsic property called a spin. In which two directions can an electron spin? Boom, ba doom, ba doom, ba doom, doom, doom. Boom, ba doom, ba doom, ba doom, ba doom. That's, that's later. That's I what that, oh. I know. Okay. That's fine. We'll be right back. Got it. I have some fun facts about electron spin. No way. Spin. Do you really just... You Googled it? <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>
<laughs> of course. <laughs> why, would, why wouldn't I Google it? It's right here. <laughs> All right, welcome back. We are in our third and final segment. I am still wearing <laughs> the Vision Pro. It's we are at, so in real time. It's about an hour 20. An hour 20. Mm -hmm. um, I will say now, and I haven't really done that many tasks on the headset other than Googling the trivia answers. Um, <laughs> wow. But there is a little bit of warm air coming off the top of the headset. You wanna, can you feel the warm air? The, yes. headset, the headset itself is not warm and it doesn't really get warm unless I'm doing a lot and Mac mirroring or, or whatever. But also, I never hear the fans, and I never feel the hot air. The, ne the thing never actually gets hot on like my face face, so that's my update. So the hot air doesn't come out of the headset, but it does come out of your mouth. <laughs> no, the hot air comes like, it like leaks There's out a little the vent, vent, yeah. And there are real fans like pushing it out. So oh. an hour and 20 in, mm -hmm. we're telling you to continue to put this on. Would you prefer right now to take it off? <laughs> Honestly, I love that I can just Google things. Oh, okay, well, if you weren't Disney. cheating and trivia, uh, would you prefer to have this off? This is the best I've ever felt after this long because of the headband I'm wearing, so I'm fine. If you were wearing this headband? I, there's no way I'd still have it on. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So the only reason to do that was if you don't want to mess up your hair or if you're going to use it for like five minutes. Exactly. Or if you're an Apple retail store and you want it to look nice on the shelf. Looks nice. Yeah. yeah. That's nice that they give you both in the bag considering the travel carrying case is $200. Yeah. Did you want to talk about the carrying case? Yes. Thank, thank you, David. Let me see this bad boy. We are so torn up. Sorry, us. I need to bring this up. Where I see the little studio? Can we I see the little sleep mask thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is just for like, I like transport. I know, but I love it. I'm going to start with the positives of this carrying case. Andrew has some thoughts. Beautiful. Is this like Alcantara inside? Yeah, and it's like, feel it. It's soft. Beautiful, soft, nice interior, adjustable to where the, the the goggles can sit right in there, strap in, wires, battery, place for everything. Great material, good zipper, awesome exterior strap that retracts back in when you're using That's it. That's nice. Wow. Then it is made out of what feels like puffer jacket material that's been crumpled on my college dorm room floor <laughs> for like four months while I neglect to do my laundry. Yeah. Waterproof ripstop mesh. That looks like Thank you. it's been sitting on my college dorm room floor for four <laughs> months without me doing my laundry. Yeah. Sure. How I, is it so wrinkly? I agree. The wrinkles. Yo, I could rip that. The wrinkling's so bad. The wrinkles kind of kill it. They really? don't kill it. It totally kills it. You can be waterproof and ripstop without having this much wrinkle. I agree. To it. I want to say I really love the retractable the bouncy band. Awesome. Very yeah. cool. Although somebody brought this up, I think it was Christian Selig from um, Apollo. Ex Apollo. From uh, Ex Apollo and. Pixel Pals, I think he uh, he was like the Vision Pro can the band can push forward to the goggles. Yeah, could this not be half the size? I was thinking that half yeah. of this opening is just so the band can be fully extracted oh, yeah. on the back. So I keep part. thinking about like Apple doesn't make that many carrying cases, but the carrying case situation for AirPods Max is, is a abysmal. <laughs> it's a bra. And, and then this is but, like, but but the thing about that is. The headphones don't fold or attract in any meaningful way, so there kind of is no good yeah. way to con compact it. It's going to be huge no matter what. You just need to, this, to take the damage. Yeah, this, as you mentioned, like the back of the headset, you can push it in, and you can actually make it smaller. You can take the band off even and make it even smaller, but this carrying case assumes you just take it off and put it in and don't try to compress it at yeah, all. Yeah, this takes up half the interior of my backpack. That's a big deal. And the actual Vision Pro takes up like a fifth of the interior. Yeah, like backpack. this feels like yeah. not backpackable, not packable. Yeah, unless almost. you have like a- or it's the Unless it's 90% of, yeah. And yeah. then so like half of this size, you could squeeze it in a backpack with maybe a couple other essentials of the things you want with you on a plane. Yeah. It does feel substantial though. Like I people it's start nice. about the price, $200, because let's be honest, when you just hear $200 carrying case, you're like, that's insane. I feel like this is deserving of of the price. Maybe that's a hot take, but this feels like a $200 case. I'm not even joking. I think it's less of that it's a $200 case and more of it's a $3,500 headset that doesn't come with the case. It should come totally with it. Yeah. Yeah, Someone yeah. made the point that a lot, most of Apple's cases are 5% like of the retail value of the device. So 
the base iPhone 15 Pro is $1,000, and the case is $50, which is 5% of the value. What is this? Uh, that's 200, which is about 5% of 3,500. Damn. Is that just the so, math on like what we think we can get out of the customer? Maybe you think? I'm not sure. It's like, like how apps on iPad cost more because people with iPads have more money, and that's, I'm sure Vision Pro apps are gonna be pricey. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure if they're just like, all of our cases are 5% of the product price, or if it's, I mean, cause that's clearly not the case, because if you get a regular iPhone that's cheaper, the case is still $50, I think. Mm. Um, but yeah, for its pro ones, I guess. I want to <laughs> try and unwrinkle this. There's no way. It came wrinkled. I, I think I can. It, comes it like literally that. came wrinkled in the box. If you'll allow me, I want to try and unwrinkle this. I think you might do you have a do damage iron? to it before you think it'll do damage unwrinkled. to it? It's just a steamer. I don't think a steamer I'll let you would steam damage it. this. Okay. I'll let you steam I want to try and steam this and see if I can fix okay. it. And then it'll wrinkle in 45 seconds after. I want to say I really like this little like nanny sleep granny mask. like sleep mask that comes on the Vision yeah. Pro to keep the glass protected. It's funny because we didn't know about that. Yeah. But then Jenna Ezerick made like a fake post when everybody else was posting them seeing it, which is like an actual sleep mask. And if you go back, it looks almost exactly oh, really? like that. Yeah. That's funny. What is that baggy? This is for your accessories, so your charging uh, cable and brick, and I also have the microfiber in here because this thing gets infinite fingerprints, and it does have a little nick on the glass as well. Already? Yeah. Nice. I mean, you can't say it, it's tiny, but I have How? noticed it because we're shooting it. How'd you get know. it? There's a lot of, okay, so here's the thing. I can't do it because I'm still wearing it, but picking up the Vision Pro is kind of a, a deliberate experience. If yeah. you pick up by the- Like padding? The padding, It'll it just, just magne off. magnetizes off. It just mm -hmm. falls off. So you gotta pick it up by the metal, right. which I imagine we've like, you know, clanked a phone up against it once or twice, probably done other like right. multitasking things and scraped True. it. True. So, yeah. But by, by the time this pod's out, our last video will probably be out, Hopefully. which then you'll know that Brandon found a way with <laughs> Alex and myself to rig this onto a robot. So yeah. maybe that's well, where Brandon tweeted that. Oh, he tweeted it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. So yeah. That we found out we had to build our own rig to connect it to the robot. Here's so. a question. Okay. You hate this. If yes. you could buy just that, would you put that in your backpack? Like Vision Pro, just I would, that. Oh, I think that's oh, yeah, the better move. That's yeah. the only thing I care about. Yeah. It's protecting that. Protecting yeah. glass. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The inside lenses, I don't know how dangerous that Wait, is. Wait, it Probably comes not. with this in the original box, right? That's not yeah, the case in thing. The okay, box. just checking. Yep. Yeah, it, no, comes, like, it comes with it on it. Okay, yeah, then I probably. So you don't really need that. I guess you're only buying that if you're carrying it just by itself. So maybe that's. Yeah. Does the dual loop strap collapse? Yeah. Okay. To a point, maybe not as much because it still has a hard. But, but yeah. those buckles, when they're collapsed, could scratch the. Oh, oh no, that is so part of weird. It. I would it's just so put it in weird. This. Your wide eye. <laughs> Only I would one. Put it, I would put it in the accessory pouch. Does that come with it, or does that in the? This is just in the Vision Pro carrying case. Carrying case. Oh yeah. <laughs> Some more <laughs> rip stop for you. Oh, I like that. Nice. Sound. I have to be the only person in the studio that absolutely adores this case. No, I like it. No, I like it. Okay, I like you it. too. It's two hundred dollars. Well, and it's okay. too big. I need Andrew, the material. It should be yeah. half the size. It's wrinkled. Andrew and David are in the this wrinkly thing is dumb camp. No, it's just ugly. I'm. I think it's it's fire. beautiful. It's so sick. You like that it's wrinkly. I. It, 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 I don't. I'm gonna I don't stop love that it's wrinkly. I love the ripstop material. Like that is the kind of I'm quality. Not, I have I nothing against the ripstop expensive. material. I just don't like ripstop material that looks like. Poo, because it's so wrinkly. It just it's... reminds me of like the uh, NASA, yeah, like font. Like it seems like you could have the NASA logo on there, and it would definitely be a NASA product. It's like an astronaut suit. The yeah. Michelin Man would love. I think my problem, like, if it eventually got wrinkly because you use it so much, but it's so wrinkly that the product photos yeah, on right. Apple's website are wrinkly. As a boy who spent my early years uh, baking in the California sun and will, when I am 80 years old, look just as wrinkly as that bag, <laughs> I think in a little bit, that'll fit me quite well. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair. Have you, you guys ever like painted a room or painted a house and you go and you get from Home Depot those like mm -hmm. $7 paint suits like the mm -hmm. That's what the material reminds me of. That's and that way stuff, less cool than NASA. <laughs> well, yeah. And it's also it's why thing. I don't... Am I crazy for not believing the ripstop claim? What claim? Like, what claim? I, I think you could tear that with your fingers. You I think that's just With your name. fingers? I don't, I don't think with your fingers. I don't, I don't think it's... You can't tear it with your fingers, no. I, I also think, think it's... Very strong. <laughs> I also think ripstop in general can still rip pretty easily. Yeah, yeah it's just less easy. Is like than Kleenex. Slice it, I have plenty rip. of ripstop pants that are ripped. Wait, I'm from a this. good pricker bush or a good rock or something yeah. like that. Yeah, 
Let me let me let me see what my fingers. It's just better. It's like better than regular material. <laughs> we have ripstop mesh in the atoms as well. Nylon fabric that is woven so that a tear will not spread. Nice plug. Oh, rip stop. stop. It doesn't yeah. stop the rib. It's woven? It stops the rib. Wait, let me see it. Yeah, it's, it's, wo nylon. it's woven? Well, if we're done with the case, sure. I think we should talk about tax. something else that Apple is charging people a lot of money for. Let's talk about taxes. And do it. Which is potentially the only other news article that came out this, this week. week. Yeah, yeah, thanks. And is one you that did. is yeah. extremely confusing. Yeah. To you where did. I will... Sorry. sorry. No, no, no. Go you on. go. Yeah. Okay. I'll just say, to where I will preface this, where David and I have both read multiple <laughs> articles. I've listened. We to have this. contacted multiple developers that we know. Christian, who I mentioned before, being one of them, uh, nice okay. enough to jump on a call this morning and yeah. help us. And, and then he we was confused. And he was confused we as well. Something, actually. Um, and yeah. then we went to Apple's thing. But basically, this is the, about the new EU third party and app tax that they will be charging due yeah. to passing EU laws. I'm prefacing this whole thing, and I'm going to let David probably jump into this and go into how this all works, but we are a bit confused because <laughs> there are different right articles. No, no, no. <laughs> Anything we get wrong is both of our faults. It's on me. Um, <laughs> Just kidding. But there are lots of articles that say different things yeah. and are confusing in the way it words it, so we're going to try yeah. and get this as best as we can. But new yeah. ways Apple is charging apps in the EU. Right. What is happening? Okay. Yeah. So uh, the European Union and Apple have a very contentious relationship right now. <laughs> in many ways, uh, we've seen USB-C... Uh, now they are forcing Apple to allow third party app stores on the iPhone uh, because they see Apple as a like gatekeeper of sorts. The iPhone and all mobile phones are basically like an essential device that everyone uses in their daily life. Mm -hmm. So even though Apple is this company that can generally do whatever they want, the European Union is saying, well, you need to do it in a way that is beneficial to consumers or at least like open to consumers and gives people choice. So what they've done is they have forced Apple to allow these third-party app stores, but they've done it in the most, um, I'm going to put my middle finger up at you, European Union, even though, I, like, malicious <laughs> compliance. There's a great sub subreddit for this called r slash malicious compliance. <laughs> Very fun. That's really funny. Uh, it's people, like, doing what they're told to do, but in a way that is so freaking annoying. And that's what Apple is doing here. Sounds like people paying tickets in like pennies. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> yeah. I'm paying. Yeah, basically. You're going to fight for this. Exactly. I'm going to make your life harder <laughs> to do the thing you're forcing me to do. Uh, so now there are three different options that you as a developer can do if you want to either, one, operate a third-party app store in the European Union, which is now forced by law, or have your app on a third-party app store that you can access on the iPhone. Notably... Uh, Fortnite has not been on the Apple App Store because Tim Sweeney is very against the 30% Apple tax. Mm -hmm. They got in a big fight. Uh, the whole um, Epic versus Apple thing started because Tim Sweeney basically like broke the App Store Apple rules and introduced a third-party payment method within the Fortnite app on the App Store. So they got kicked off, never really resolved it. Now they're going to be able to offer the Epic App Store as well as their own third-party pay third payment processing method on the iPhone in Europe only, which is really annoying. <laughs> and one thing to note there is like, just because it's in the EU and me being a moron, so there's probably a couple other morons listening to this, where it's just like, there are developers in other countries, but they still have people in the EU using their app. So there are still portions of this app income that are going to be affected by this and how they want to like work in the yeah EU. so yeah 100 yes. percent. okay so three options option number one nothing changes you do literally nothing you stay in apple's app store thing they take 30 percent cut you don't have to think about anything that's it you're not changing anything option cool one cool option two um you completely leave the apple app store and you only put your app in third-party app stores so you don't have to pay the 30% cut because you're not being published in the Apple App Store. But once you hit 1 million downloads uh, per year, you pay 50 euro cents, which is there a word for that? Because we have dollars and cents. Is there? I'll it's, Google it. It's cents. Cents. It's just I, like, cents. I like euro well, so cents, the cents. Well, then the conversion, though, is technically 54 cents USD. So okay. I'm just trying to make sure it's not exactly. Currently. A, approximately 50 cents is what we'll Currently. say for the rest of this. Approximately 50 yeah. cents okay. per user per year. Sort of. Yes. The sort per of. year thing. 
yeah. we'll touch on in a minute. Right. Yeah. That was what was mostly confusing yes. us this morning. Um, so yeah, you don't have to pay that 30% cut, but then after you hit a million users, it's 50 cents per user. That could stack up very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's per user over 1 million. So the first 1 right. million don't count. After that, yeah, they count. You guys may have had someone in your life that has said, oh, I moved into a different tax bracket, so I'm making less money now. And it's like, no, that's not how that works. They take a higher percentage of the uh, it's additional additional yeah. income. Yeah, uh, there's a word for that. that I there is remember. that I can't remember right now either. Anyway, option three, uh, you agree to the new terms and you're <clears throat> by the way. Once you agree to these new terms and say, I want to offer my app in a, a third party app store, you're not allowed to say, I want to go back to Apple only. It, it's irreversible. So far, it's <laughs> Talk about locking in there, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, it's irreversible. That's specifically to discourage people from making this choice. Yes, probably. absolutely. Um, but if you do that, uh, you actually only pay 17% to Apple. Uh, but then additionally, after 1 million users, you also pay that 50 euro cent fee per user. per user. So the tax that goes directly to Apple goes from 30% to 17%, which is good. But if you are a very large app that has a ton of users, that 50 euro cents per user could stack a ton. Something that I was seeing flying around the internet that we we're having a long discussion about this morning that was very misleading. A lot of people were saying an update counts as an install. It does not. Um, Your API. It sort of does. Sort of does. It can count as an install if you have not installed the app that year or if you have not updated the app I that I think year. I read this enough where I can explain this go, part. Go well. ahead. Go okay, ahead. so it's not that it's actually 50. I'm just going to keep saying 50 cents. I hope everyone understands what that means. Yeah. Yeah. 50 cents. It's not 50 cents per year, but it's 50 cents per new install per year, and you get a 12-month grace period in that. So if you install it after the 1 million users, it costs that company 50 cents. In a year, if you don't reinstall it, it doesn't, it's not another 50 cents, but if an update happens after that 12 month period, it counts as a reinstall right. and restarts the 12 month period. Yeah. So some people were confused because they were like, well, every time I update this, I'm gonna be charged another 50 cents per person who updates it. You can do it a bunch of times, but in, it, Every single app is going to update right. at least once a year. So just assume it as every app is basically yeah. 50 cents per user per year over over million. a million. And mm -hmm. they do that crucially because if you basically saturated your app install market and you got like you got like 10 million installs right away, but then you didn't even remotely get a million installs the next year. If they didn't have that as a thing, Apple wouldn't make any money. So they have to recharge you every year yeah. if you update your app at all. Yeah. Um, okay. So <laughs> Apple makes it a big deal that, oh, 99% of developers are actually paying probably less if they go through the third party app store because yeah, it's 17% yeah. and then they don't have that many people. That's framing. It's framing because crucially, uh, the top 1%. The top 1% of app developers are on like 95% of people's phones. Yeah. Um, and will probably pay equally as much or more. Load of money. Yeah. Like million, like, like, $60 million. It's Thanks. also weird because then it's making smaller developers hope that their apps don't get popular. In a way. <laughs> if they're like, able to like compensate for it somehow. But yeah, if you have a free app that yeah. you don't really mm -hmm. make money on and it gets popular and you have it in an exterior app store, you're screwed. Like you're going to owe Apple a ton of money unless you can, and then unless you can like make money through ads or something, you're kind of just screwed. Christian was mentioning to us how like it could, pot it's potentially harmful if you make an app and you don't convince the person to do the premium version, which subscribes, and then they have auto updates on, and now every year they just kind of forget about that app, and now you potentially have a bunch of users who aren't giving you the income from it, but now you're getting charged 50 cents per user per year. Yeah. And that adds up if you are on a larger app. Right, so it's very confusing, definitely on purpose, just to try to keep people in their regular app, uh, app store system, and then, there's a new set of taxes uh, if you are trying to operate a third-party app mm -hmm. store. So those were all for just developers that either wanted to be on just Apple's app store or both or just on a third-party app store. But if you say you're, um, you want to make the Epic app store, which Epic definitely wants to do, this move is definitely just a giant middle finger to Epic because of the whole trial thing. Um, you don't get the 1 million user grace period. 
So if you're operating a third-party app store, no matter what, you have to pay 50 euro cents per user install uh, per year. Yeah, and so, again, we're saying per year, assuming the whole actual 12 grace period, which is just going to always be per year, yeah. but I just want to make sure no one so thinks this is wrong. This is what it feels like if you're Epic. Not only do you have to pay 50 cents per user who downloads your app store at all, but then you also have to give 70, 17% of all commission from that app store to Apple. Is, I thought that was only if, if they're still on the Apple app store as well. I think if they are oh. only in their own third party, then they oh. don't have to pay the percentage. At all? I believe so. Okay. <laughs> we well, I guess it is a little more confusing with that, but I think I think it's if you're on both, it's 17% plus 1 million yeah. 50 cent. If you are just totally by yourself, I guess this is you are creating the third party app store, which I assume if you're creating the third party app store, you don't want to be on the regular app store. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I feel. Anyway, this has uh, created a lot of contention with developers this uh, week because it's just been it's so confusing. confusing. It's confusing on purpose. It's trying to keep people in there in their world garden on purpose. And then there's a whole nother thing with like you can offer third party payment methods as well. So that's the thing where like I do think some this is the potential win win for some companies. Some I think The Verge used Spotify as an example because Spotify does not let you subscribe to them inside of the app because of the Apple tax. Yeah. So if they can now allow you to subscribe inside of the app, but they're just going to be paying the 50 cents per user per year, it, they will probably get the extra amount of revenue through subscriptions. Yeah. And because it's easier, and then the 50 cents per user per year is cheaper than the 30% tax on the subscri right. reoccurring subscriptions. Something that some apps had <laughs> done, like uh, Twitter slash X uh, had a way to, they still have this. You can subscribe to X Premium in the app on the phone, but it literally costs 30% mm -hmm. more per month. Mm -hmm. And they don't really tell you that very obviously, but if you go and subscribe on a desktop, then you pay 30% less every month, which is insane. Um, so now it would be nice if, you know, Spotify let you subscribe in the app, but they just said, heads up, it's going to be 50 cents more per month if you subscribe here versus on. I think even if they just do it normally, like they're getting a better revenue out of it yeah. or they're like making it up. So it's still, they, they're okay with yeah. how much more revenue they'll get by people being able to subscribe in the app because it's easier versus paying that 50 cents. Yeah. Again, this is also only the EU. There are obviously people all over the place, all over the world. So it's like. A lot, but also a little to companies that are that big. So yeah, and then also, Apple is going to be making so much money off of Spotify in that scenario if they're charging yeah. fifty cents per user. Epic is also specifically um, they're prepping to challenge the sure. changes because it kind of is a direct target at them. I was also going to say the EU can still look at this yes. and review it. So yeah. this is still mm. ongoing. It is surprising mm -hmm. that Apple is being this brazen against the European Union. But. A couple developers we talked to were basically like, we are going to do nothing at first. Let it just keep riding the 30% and see. let some other people be the guinea pigs on this and yeah. see if they it winds up costing them less. How big of a difference it is if it's worth the huge hassle. All of this kind of seems purposefully confusing and in crazy to just hope that nobody makes any changes and just continues to eat yeah. the 30%. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. definitely what they're hoping. I also realized David and I were going in on that for a while and I hadn't heard Marquez and I was like, is he listening and intrigued <laughs> or is he inside of an app inside of the Vision Pro right now? I was playing Fruit Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this is an evolving story as all of this Apple EU stuff has been. If anything... Apple pissing off the EU even more <laughs> makes it even more likely that maybe iMessage could be interoperable. <laughs> That's exciting. In the future. Because That's the whole exciting. beeper thing really just, did start a ripple. Yeah. Like Senator Senator Elizabeth Warren started tweeting about beeper, which well, was not on my Twitter. And then they all forgot about it. And didn't beeper just totally shut down like everything? They shut down their iMessage compatibility. Yeah. yeah. Rip. Win. W. <laughs> <laughs> but OK, so yeah, that was confusing. David and I tried very hard. Probably a few things we got wrong. Please let yeah. us know if we did in a nice manner. But do the Please. research first because people say a lot of things at us and then we look it up. We're not developers. Not true. We don't know. Yeah. So yeah. thank you.
Um, how you doing, Marquez? I, Marquez checked out a while ago. I can see the blue glaze. You're not. Per- <laughs> you need. You need that app. I was. Now talking about. Like your eyes are glazing over. They literally mean it. <laughs> can we get a time update? What's he? Um, what about, yeah, like one forty-five. Yeah, there's an extra five Sheesh. on you. Yeah, this band is way better, man. Way better. Hmm. Are you excited to take it off though? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, making me want a Vision Pro, but I know yeah. that I will not use it consistently. You know, there's one in the office soon too that won't be used as much. That's true. I'm just out here like learning. <laughs> Googling there things. is a really great comment You're on there. Reddit yeah. about another comment on Reddit about how when you are in the unboxing, the very first time you put it on, you go, this is really heavy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, the difference between this solo knit band and the way it the, the way it's holding the weight on the front of your face versus the way this one takes so much of that weight off of your cheekbones mm. is enormous. Have you ever thought of just like working out? My cheekbones? <laughs> Everything. That's the thing. Is all the jokes are like, your neck strength, your neck strength. The only way I feel it on my neck is when I do that. I'll, that's that's when I feel it on my neck. Your eye just like around. swivel your head. Yeah. That, yeah, 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 yeah. Your eye just went all over the place. All right, my <laughs> eyes everywhere. <laughs> Apple Ooh. Fitness Plus adds like a cheek muscle. <laughs> like, how, like, it's like, how many reps of smiles can you do, bro? <laughs> it's going to add the F1 like neck pulling workout. To we'll, end the, the new... we'll end the podcast with me taking it off and seeing how many lines are on my face. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll definitely we'll do that. We'll do that. Um, oh, yeah. But of course, we should, uh, before tri- we get to the end. Trivia? We should do trivia. Trivia? Uh, dude? Yeah, dude? Trivia. Yeah, we should dude? do that. We should do that. Yes, yes. Trivia. All right. Yes. Trivia. Yes. Quick yeah. nope. update on nope. the score. Nope. Quick I'm update. Marquez cheated. <laughs> <laughs> Scores don't matter because Marquez is cheating. But check out the Trivia Extravaganza episode dropping next week. Bonus yeah, next episode. Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, or so. Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever I'm done editing it. So first question, which oh. legendary mobile device was more expensive at launch? 1996's Palm Pilot Professional. Or 2002's T-Mobile slash Danger Marquez, you dude. He, <laughs> I'm like watching him cheat in real time. <laughs> What's the other one? Yeah, sucks. What's that? <laughs> All right. Well, you don't want to play my game. I'm not playing your game. Do you guys know the other one? You're just guessing the other one. All right. <laughs> I actually only know one of them, so I just wrote that one down. Just to spite you. <laughs> Wait, I like your aunt. My answer <laughs> is quantum. Whoa. A, B, A and B. A, A or B. A. <laughs> That's correct. Are you saying they're the same price? No. No. What are I'm, you saying? I'm saying that they're both or neither until you tell me the answer. And then <laughs> it collapses and <laughs> no. Schrodinger's trivia. No, Alice, Alice, my answer's in a super position. It is. <laughs> it is. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Idiot. I'm I'm going with the one megabyte palm pilot this professional so which retailed at 399 dollars so when it came out annoying. i have the same answer without <laughs> cheating <laughs> next question <laughs> electrons have an intrinsic property called a spin which two directions does an electron spin in Just Google electron spin direction. <laughs> oh. Close safari. Okay. <laughs> and my answer is uh, spin up or spin down, often denoted by negative Z or positive Z. Interesting. So what does the Z stand for, Marquez? Oh, that wasn't the question. <laughs> <laughs> but I can Google it right now. <laughs> Andrew? I just wrote forward and backwards. David? As electrons are in a quantum state. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this. I'm not. not. They're, no, they're not. Yes, it is. No, they're not. Electron spin is in a quantum state. 
until Google you observe it. Yes, it I, is. A no, particle's no, no, no. inherent angular momentum is parameterized by spin quantum numbers, clearly. Wow, Just exactly. right off the noggin. The answer was up and down <laughs> okay. for the listener. Yeah, I know. That's what I wrote. About electrons being... So to identify spin direction, positions. you determine the number of electrons the atom has. Then you draw the electron configuration for the atom. See electronic configurations for more information. Then distribute <laughs> the electrons Link using up and two. down arrows to represent the electron spin direction. So... Wow, back to reality. You guys look way better in VR. Two hours. Wait, Almost what? two hours? Whoa. What? Hey. <laughs> I'm not used to seeing you with that glasses on. Yeah, no, this is this is really goggles. Eye-opening in a stressful way. But literally. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thanks for spending time with us in or not in the Vision Pro. We have a lot more to talk about with a lot of this stuff, but uh until the next one. Catch you later. Peace. Anyway. All right. All right. Out. Wait, outro us. Wait, yeah, you yeah, outro yeah, in this oh, scenario. Wow, oh. Waveforms produced by Ellis Rovin and Adam Molina. We are part of the Vox Media Podcast Network, and our intro outro music is by Vane Sill. Dang. It is so bright in here. Your, <laughs> that band mark on your head is pretty intense. There was a conversation that somehow went from cannibalism into... It was David.